Praise him, praise him first and foremost, brothers and sisters. As always, we give a shout out to the Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. He's the Lord of my life. Shout out to YouTube for another opportunity to share. I know I look I look kind of sick and everything. I'm not. I'm actually, you know, this is allergy season, and these allergies are tearing me up. Got my eyes closed. I'm looking like, you know, shout out to him. I'm looking like Mike Geronimo, of those of y'all who remember Mike Geronimo. Shout out to him. Good, good, good brother. Mike Geronimo. Mike Geronimo eyes used to be like this. <laughs> anyway, listen to this, right? Scripture. Romans, ah, Romans 12, 8. Let no debt remain outstanding except for the continual debt to love one another. Powerful, powerful verse by the Holy Apostle Paul. Me, I'm in serious debt. Seriously. A lot of people like to talk about what they got, you know, but a lot of people don't like to talk about what they owe. And who would? It's kind of, you know, it's embarrassing. You'd be like, yo, why you put yourself in debt? But I'm in debt in two reasons. I'm in debt financially and I'm in debt spiritually. My the, the, the debt I always that lingers over me is always the debt to love others. You know, that's a debt, you know, can never be repaid because we saw that the Lord himself, he he paid that debt by dying on the cross for us. For those of you who believe, you know, shout out to all my believers in Christ. Shout out to all the brothers and sisters in the, the nation of Islam, the the uh, Sunni and Shiite Muslims, the, you know, um, oh, man, the FOI, you know, all the Muslims, you know, shout out to all the Hindus, all the Buddhists. All the different religions out there, you know, I just want to give you all a shout out. You say nothing but love and everything. But for those who you believe in the Lord and Savior, Jesus to Christ, like I do, that's what stands firm in that uh, conviction as far as that passage of scripture from the Holy Apostle Paul. For those of you who believe, you know, um, and even if and shout out to even all my atheists that don't believe, you know, I understand. You know, I don't think your reason is valid, but I understand, you know, um, your questions in a sense are valid, you know, but as human beings can't uh, answer certain questions that only the father, you know, once again, allergies can reveal. I say that to say this. So that's the constant debt, you know, that can never fully repay by man, only repay by him for what I believe. And that aspect, but I do my best to try to work off that debt. Now, financial debt, um, like he said, let no debt remain outstanding. I got outstanding debts. You know, shout out to all my men, men and women that pay child support. Now, once again, if I get into office, that's going to be abolished. I'm serious. It's going to be abolished. It's not good. I'm going to push every, if everything else is changing the law, that's one of the laws that's going to change. It should, it should not be the government's responsibility. And that aspect to make sure uh, ladies and to make sure certain men that you get support from the other party. That's up to you. Then it'll make men and women be more conscious who you lay up with. Seriously. But with that, and I'm not saying that because I pay child support because this to be clear. I wasn't responsible with money at one point and probably 10 years ago, I, you could ask my son's mother if you want. I tried to put myself on child support because I wasn't, I just wasn't disciplined with money. You know, a situation would happen there and I would take the money that I pulled the, put out for my son and I put it toward the bill, a ticket, whatever. I had a lot of stuff going on and that's not to justify it's just what it is. You know, so uh, shout out to the people in child support agencies and that aspect. Some of them could be very mean, at least while out here in NYC. But, you know, uh, love your job while you have it. Because if I get in the office, all of you guys are out of work. Seriously, no disrespect. You're going to have to find another means of work. <laughs> Dead serious. But outside of that, um, I believe this is the season. You know, this is the time, you know, if the Lord gives you, you know, if he gives you money, brothers and sisters, in that aspect, you make an abundant amount of money. You make a decent amount of money. Eliminate all your debt. It's nothing better than financial freedom. And one of the things of financial freedom is not having debt. Therefore, you can really enjoy your money. Some of us have debt. They, you know, we still want to spend or do that. And I dig it. I understand. You know, you don't just make money to, uh, you know, you don't just earn money, make money to pay bills. And, you know, shout out to King Larry. He taught us that. The apostle. He taught us that. The holy apostle taught us, like, don't give all your money to bills. And he's totally right. I'm agreement to that too. But I'm not in agreement, not not 
saying what he said, but I'm not in agreement with letting your debt based on scripture remain outstanding. Settle all your debts, whether they're tickets, you know, uh, child support, whatever it is, settle it. If you're a homeowner, you know, um, the interest rate out here in New York is crazy. I mean, probably all over right now, you know, double your payments. You know, that's why I don't really got a home in that aspect because I can't see myself tied into a 20, 30 year mortgage. If I was, I got to make double payments on it to eliminate it because the interest rate alone, you talk about paying over, depending on how much you put down, right? If you put down $10,000, $20,000, you're talking about you're going to pay a, 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 a you're going to pay the bank over a hundred to 200,000 in just interest. They caked off you. And once I re I realized that, I'm like, yo, man, you know what? Obviously, if you're trying to get a home, stack as much money as you can so you can put as much money as you want down. You get a home. You still got to have so many things you still got to cover. You got a property tax, your boiler, your, your landscaping. You got to have a good, trustworthy uh, contractors, subcontractors, handymen of need. You got to, I mean, it's so much with just having a home. Not, not forgetting if you can't afford a home, now you're renting a part of the home out to somebody. You got to deal with it. It's a lot with that. And I'm not saying that to discourage. Go forward. But just know when you got a home in that aspect, you know, you want to try to pay it off. But also because if something was to happen, you get sick. You know, think about it. You're locked in for a mortgage 20 to 30 years. 20 to 30 years. You're locked in. Excuse me. You don't know what's going to happen in the next 20, 30 years. Lord forbid you pay the home. Uh, you, you've been paying for 20, 20 years. You get sick. Now you can't work no more. They're coming to snatch that home. That home is not your home. When people say, yo, man, it's my house. It's not your house until it's paid off. Like the car you see me driving, it's not mine until it's paid off. So actually I'm paying it. I'm paying on it to pay it off. But it's still the banks, you know, until I pay it off. Then it's truly mine. So with that being said in closing, because I didn't want to be so long, I was detailed, and I'm not trying to be long-winded, is that do whatever you got to do to eliminate all your debt, you know? Prioritize. You got to make sacrifices. Some of us got a lot of clothes, sneakers, and stuff like that, you know? And I'm not saying, you know, I, I'm one. If you want it, get it, no problem. But if that means you got to sacrifice not get this suit or the, the, these sneakers or these boots, whatever, this week, don't get it sacrifice to put that money in eliminating your debts is not that's the best financial freedom is knowing that you don't owe nobody a dime i just paid off a credit card and they offering now it made my credit go down a little i don't care because they'll go back up and everything they was like oh you know some people say yo you know what uh you pay it off and then from there you know they don't charge you and then it, no not with this credit card because my credit was so bad my credit at one point went to the fours now I'm back up to the sixes right um, they were like, yo, you got this credit card Well, I'm paying interest. And then I got to pay an extra $8 a month on top of that. And I talked to them. I said, listen, I will keep the car, eliminate this monthly charge of $8 fee. Cause it's not an $8 annual fee. It's an $8 fee because, well, this is a card because of how your credit is to restore your credit and all that stuff. I said, well, my credit is much better now and everything. And if you want me to keep doing business with you guys, your line of credit, you got to eliminate this. They were like, yo, we can't do it. No, they could do it. They don't want to do it because they want to make money. I right, cancel it. And I don't care. It hit my credit with 15 points. That, other, that 15 points will come back. I don't care. And you know what? I, I'm, I'm one. I'd rather have cash anyway opposed to credit. You know, I think a person should have only probably one to two credit cards max. All of you that got five, six credit cards, that's not good. But I understand situations arise. You don't have the money. I, I dig it. I understand. But if you can help it, who's this calling? Probably my man Ernie Robbie. Oh, okay. I'll call him back. Um, you want to make sure you have probably one, one or two credit cards max. One credit card used, one for emergency. That's it. And everything. I only keep one for myself, you know, um, in that regard. And I I want to make sure that's up to date because I don't listen, when you pay a credit card, I think you should pay it off like an American American Express. Seriously, pay whatever you spend, pay it off at the end of the month. Don't let no debt. Remain outstanding. Excuse me. I'm telling you, I got the allergies. The allergies turn into a cold. Make sure when you out too, you know, you see people still wearing masks. I think people. Uh, let me just say this. This deviate. People that people that wear masks. I now I believe you should wear a mask if you have a cold. 
You know, you, you you know, for whatever reason, you can't come out, go out of work if you're sick and everything. I dig it. You need to make your money. Wear masks. Don't get every everybody else sick. Allergies is no joke. So shout out to all the brothers and sisters that suffer with allergies during allergy season. The best thing I can tell you is persevere, drink your tea, have your eye drops. I'm about to get me some more Visine, you know, uh, and take your allergy medication. Try not to OD on it. Get you a lot of rest. Take you a nice bath and everything. You just got, you know. All these uh, home remedies and stuff, take them. But most of it, you just got to persevere until the season is over. So this is just the season I'm dealing with. With that being said, brothers and sisters, listen, have a great day. Do your best to let no debt remain outstanding except the continued debt to love one another. All right? Peace and blessings. Peace!